Hello and thank you for joining us for this UL standards presentation. Just to bring viewers up to speed, we've been running an educational campaign between PP Control and Automation, Rockwell Automation, Product Approvals Limited and today's contributor, uh, contributors Lutze, uh, which focuses on the many requirements of UL that OEMs need to consider before seizing on what is essentially a huge opportunity in North America. The focus today is on one of those considerations that of the requirements around cabling and interconnectivity in relation to UL. Nigel Broad joins us and he will take the reins shortly and deliver an insightful presentation on the subject, which we hope is exactly why you're tuned in. And we're also joined by Phil Murby, who will be posing some of the questions that are frequently asked on cabling and interconnectivity hopefully covering all bases for our viewers. Uh, so Nigel, if you don't mind just introducing yourself and what uh, you'll be talking us through today, I'll go ahead and mute myself and hand our viewers over to the experts. Cheers. Yeah. Hello everybody. Um, my name is Nigel Broad. I'm from Lutzer Limited. Um, I'm going to be today talking about the codes and standards applications and the difference in the product standards relating to cable, particularly the types of cable that are commonly used by OEMs and machine builders when constructing a machine for use in the US. The first code that's relevant is the NEC code, sometimes called NFPA 70. This can be considered an equivalent to our IE regs in the UK. So it's actually in law. It's it's um, and it's very much a diff a code is rather than a standard. The, the two other standards that are applicable for machine builders are NFPA 79, which covers all aspects of machine building from an electrical standpoint, and UL 508A, which covers the control panel construction and all these have an implication for the wiring and cables. The National Electric Code covers all the wiring for whether it's factories or housing, commercial and industrial premises and it is as I said written into law and there are very strict requirements when we are working under NEC. An example here would be where we have a machine that's got cables running from the machine through the building to control panels or control systems or for reasons of communicating between machines. We're actually going through the fabric of the building. Um, we'd have power maybe, we'd have control and we'd have communications all running through tray. Is, is there any reason why you've shown the cables separated in the tray, Nigel? Yes. Um, in, in terms of running cables in tray, all cables have to be of the same voltage. So if you've got a power cable rated at 600 volt, then your communications cable have to be rated to the same level. Um, these days, you, you will see Ethernet cables with 600 volt ratings which seems very strange, but it's so they can be run in the same tray as a power cable and comply with the National Electric Code. The next code working standard is UL508A. This will be discussed in depth in this series of blogs, but from a cabling point of view, um, it covers any any material used inside of the control cabinet and there is a particular section which gives you a choice of standards in which to comply to. Now usually we relate to um, tri-rated in this example because tri-rated is the one we are we are we recognize and if you look at um, text D on the slide, you can see that appliance wiring material that complies with the standard 758 
is applicable. Now, tri-rated is a UL recognised product. So it complies with CSA and of course British standards. And its temperature rating is above 90 degrees. So therefore, it's the perfect equipment wire for using in a control cabinet. NFPA 79 is more similar to EN 60204, the machine building standard. It covers a machine that stands alone or indeed a line of machines. From an electrical wiring point of view, we talk about the machine envelope, which is all cabling wiring on the machine. And then we have to consider NEC if the cables run from the machine to elsewhere in the building. NFPA 79 covers many subjects, but the, the one we're concerned with today regarding wire is section 12, which determines what you can do with machine wiring. We're now bringing in the two product standards that are relevant, um, UL recognised and UL listed. We'll look at these in detail in the slides that follow and understand the difference and understand the differences. Um, both can be used under NFPA 79. First point about NFPA 79 is it's very clear in what types of product should be used. Appliance wiring material, which is UL recognised, can be used, but the style must be applicable for industrial use. We'll see some examples later on. And where a particular cable assembly is, is uh, part of the build, appliance wiring material cables are accepted. This is because it's understood that the manufacturer of the cable assembly has taken into consideration the right standards. And it could be that the cable assembly has been listed using a recognised cable in its construction. Again, an application example where listed and recognised needs to be understood. If we go back to our tray example. Um, because the tray is running through the fabric of the building, we need to use a UL listed cable complying with NEC code. A UL recognised cable is not suitable here. Um, and therefore it has more application within the machine envelope, as we will see. So to consider you all recognised, an analogy could be made to a buffet meal where we construct our meal for many elements to give us ultimately our choice. So bringing that into a cable construction um, example, we have what are called styles for the conductors. These define how the conductor is made up. We have styles for jackets, governing things like thicknesses of insulation, materials, etc. You can compare different styles of jacket and conductors, mix them together to come up with a UL recognised product for a specific application or requirement. And this is designated by the UR symbol. Regarding the suitability, cable manufacturers have an E number. And from the E number, it is easy to, to see what styles under their category codes they they have and can use. So the example of the Lutzer E number is shown on the screen. And when we look at a particular product, 
the style is to be found on our our listings so therefore we only manufacture cables for industrial and if the, you can actually see that the, the style is to an for an industrial cable it's important that when when you are using recognized cables you can see the e number and the appropriate marking on the cable There's just an example there of a style specification. Um, these style specifications are all under UL758. And the sorts of things they show is how the conductor is made up, what temperature, what material we're using, and um, the thickness of, in, of insulation. Looking at a UL listed cable now, the an analogy is more towards an a la carte meal, where you select exactly what you're looking for, and it's 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 one choice rather than a collection of many elements. So, for a listing cable, a manufacturer has to um, come up with a listing that it complies to put the cable in for testing so now the individual cable is tested by a ul testing facility an nrtl and we ultimately are given a listing for a scope of applications for that cable this is not re this is not required with a ul recognized cable as long as we've used styles that are listed in UL758. So you can see the process is completely different and therefore the scope of use is different. OK, we're now coming to machine wiring example. So Nigel, can I just interrupt that point? Why why would you not use a UL listed cable throughout the actual machine? UL listed cables are made with certain materials from a external wiring point of view. If you just on the screen there, we have an example of a drag chain. Now with the UL recognized system, we can optimally build a product with insulating materials that allows us to get high number of flexing cycles. This is not so easy when you're using a listed cable. So it's therefore better to use cables which are specific for the job on the machine, which often means they recognize and the UL and the consideration of UL listing is for power connections from the machine. So in this example, We've got a flexing cable in a C track, as we've just discussed. Control cable, um, network or Ethernet cable coming from some kind of man machine interface. Power drive cable and servo cable. And those are typically types of multi core cables that you find on a machine today. And just answering the question, really, Phil, the UL recognized style allows us to utilize be utilized on the machine under section 12 and nfba 79 and that in comparison with ul listed cables if we're running cables from the machine um, through buildings etc is where that legislation comes in in summary we have nfba 79 which is covering the wiring of the machine. Section 12 is the one that de defines what is required. 1258A for our wiring inside our control cabinet. Um, a, a small element of the overall requirements for 508A, but it is important that the right wire is used in the construction. And Finally, the National Electric Code, which dictates the cabling from machine to machine or control panel to machine 
if it's running through a building. We typically look at a factory floor. You know, we can see our machines, which are covered by an FPA 79 in summary. The control cabinets covered by 508A. And finally, the building wiring all covered by the NEC. I do hope that's given you a brief understanding and some of the issues that need to be um, understood when considering um, a machine for building to US standards. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Um, so obviously a very complex subject. I think some of the food analogies simplified some bits, which I thought were fantastic. Um, so I'd just like to thank you both for spending the time uh, going into the subjects in such detail and, and answering many of the questions posed uh, since the campaign started. Um, so again, thank you both. Uh, if anyone watching is interested in accessing all of the campaign resources we've, we've acknowledged today, then please do navigate to the PP Control and Automation website, uh, which is ppcanda.com. Uh, the extension will be noted in this video's description and gives you access to more presentations, videos, blogs and ways in which to communicate with experts in the field of UL standards. Uh, so thanks again for watching and thanks again, Nigel. Thanks, Phil.